What is up guys, Fi here, and today we're going to be looking at one of the answers, I think, to the tank meta, and that's going to be Lucian. Second thing is Lucian is one of my favourite champs, so kind of little disclaimer is that I am a little bit biased about this, but everything I'm going to say has some basis behind it. Like, it's not like, you know when your mum asks you if she looks nice when you're going out, and you have to say yes, even though she looks like a horse? Well, in Lucian, I don't have to lie, right? If he sucks, I'm going to tell you he sucks, but I actually think he's really good. So let's start off with why he's good, and the first I think is just the obvious he has a ton of damage like he has a lot of damage abilities which means that he's good early in mid game like the way it normally works is your auto attacks are the things that are going to carry your damage late game where your abilities are the things that are going to be doing damage early game so because Lucian has a good mix of both it means he's going to be good throughout the whole game he is a lane bully if you play him correctly and the only difficult matchup he really has is against Graves you can still win that matchup though and that's why I'm putting him in because even though Graves is popular if you line your Q's up to poke then you can win that matchup the only way you lose it is if you dash into him and then he's just going to explode you so apart from the damage on his abilities he also has his ultimate which is really good long range poke or wave clear he has his dash which is really good for kiting and because it's such a low cooldown you don't really need any peel in team fights you can kind of look after yourself which is really important for solo queue now the reason I'm using Lucian in this example for the answer to the tank meta or at least one answer to it is because of the build and it's a very specific build that I've been using and testing out. So the reason it's so good is kind of because of what the enemies are building, like they're building Cinder Hulk, which is health, they're building these war mogs all the time, they're building MR items which all have health attached to them as well. So they have a butt ton of health and the other thing they're going to be building against you is obviously armor and that armor can be countered kind of by the last whisper that you'll pick up at some point. So the build we're using is going to be on screen now and I've put the specific order underneath as well but the general build is going to be IE, Shiv, Blade the Ruin King, Last Whisper and then the final item will be Defense, Bloodthirster or Phantom Dancer. So the specific order it kind of looks normal up until the Avarice Blade right but the reason we're getting this is if you're even or ahead you want to pick up that Avarice. The reason is because you can net between 500, maybe even 600 gold on that average blade before you upgrade it. And that's a crazy amount of gold. That's basically like two kills on Draven's passive to put it into perspective. Now once you have your Avarice Blade, you'll upgrade into an Infinity Edge and then you go into your Shiv. Or if you're really not fighting and you're just farming, there's no point getting your Shiv. You might as well get more out of your Avarice, so get a Vamp first and then finish the Shiv. Finally, we get onto the next part, which is either getting Blade the Rune King versus Little Armor or Last Whisper versus Armor. When I say versus Armor get Last Whisper, I mean if they have two or more armor items. If they only have the one and they're not building another one, so if they're building like a Visage second, for example, then you might as well just get the Blade of the Rune King and get the Last Whisper after. Now that is all with your boots one as well. You don't need the second upgrade of your boots. You don't need the second tier. It's not really an attack speed build and that's what I'm going to go into now. So this whole build is really revolving around your passive and the Blade of the Rune King passive. That's how you're a tank killer. So Blade of the Rune King passive is 8% of the current target's health and the active is 10% of max health making both of them really effective against tanks. Now the reason this is so good is because the passive of Lucian, so his double shot, actually procs with Blade of the Rune King. So you can get like seven auto attacks in the space of like three seconds with your passive and that means you're going to get seven procs of your Blade of the Ruined King and it absolutely shreds tanks. To pull this off in game you're going to auto attack and then reset that with your Q then you get your passive shots you use your W you get passive shots again and then use your E and you get your passive shots again. So that is seven procs in like three seconds and that is a ton of damage when you combine that with your crits and the fact that your shiv proc can crit as well you have crits and blade the ring king passive and you're shredding people. So that is pretty much why Lucian is such a god right now. Blade the Rune King is really effective in this meta and it's really effective against the current tanks. The masteries and runes that I run on Lucian are on screen now in case you actually want to go into game and you're not sure what to use. I'm just going to talk about one of the biggest weaknesses that this build actually comes up against. The biggest weakness is this Thor Mail and the Gromp Smite. Like that is really hard to deal with with this build. The biggest reason why this build struggles is because Blade the Rune King only has 10% lifesteal which is half of the bloodthirster so you're only healing half as much as you would have and basically lifesteal is kind of the way to counter thorn mail because while the damage comes into you you heal it back up 
The eventual counter to Thormail though in this build is going to be for your last item to be a Bloodthirster. So you get double life steal and last whisper and you will absolutely ruin these tanks. And it's not just Lucian, okay? This build works really well on every AD carry right now. This is probably one of the best builds to go right now if you're against super tanks and you can't get through them. The reason I made this video about Lucian though is because you're getting these double procs of your passive on the Blade of the Rune King passive. So you're kind of twice as effective as using the Blade of the Rune King as every other AD carry. So this is a very specific video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a bit different from what I normally do, but I wanted to share with you what I've been testing to try and get through the tank meta. And I know a lot of you have been really frustrated, like tweeting me, Facebook messaging me, asking me how to deal with tanks. Well, this is the best way I have found to deal with tanks so far. This is a really good build. I suggest you try it out. It's a lot of fun and I'll catch you in my next video.